Hey everybody, what's going on? Nexius here. Today's video, we are going to be covering the budget build of the Whirlwind Barbarian. Everybody knows about the best gear, Grief, Breath of the Dying, Enigma, Full Immortal Kings, etc. However, how do you get there? Because we all know you have to start small, whether it's level 1, going through the game, or simply with terrible gear, and how do you get better gear in Hell Mode. So today's video, we are covering a budget build, how you can effectively magic find in Hell Mode, where I recommend you magic find, and what kind of build I also recommend for the Whirlwind Barbarian if that's what you want to play. Now before we get into it, one more thing I want to mention, if you have not made a Barbarian yet or you are considering doing this, I recommend checking out my Barbarian leveling guide or my other class leveling guides which I will have on the screen or at the end of the video for sure. Check them out, this is the kind of video you want to check out when you are either supporting me, thank you for watching by the way, or if you are looking to get your Barbarian geared because you are already in Hell Mode. So if you are trying to level up, check out that video instead, that's going to help you beat the game very easy. However, here, let's go over the gear, where we recommend magic finding, and how do we get that amazing stuff everyone loves to talk about. So first of all, what are the pros of the Whirlwind Barbarian? One, Howl. Howl is amazing because you can scare everything away, which will allow you to focus down boss minions and also big bosses like Andorial and Mephisto. So when you are focusing down specific boss groups, because when it comes to efficiently magic finding, you don't want to kill everything. You want to focus down boss groups and bosses. So Howl allows you to do this more efficiently and we'll get more into that later. The second thing is Whirlwind has AoE. So unlike Frenzy, Berserk and other skills, uh, Whirlwind is arguably better until you have Enigma because it's not a single target skill so you can actually kill much more stuff. So overall Whirlwind is pretty nice. It's one of my favorite Barbarian builds. Additionally on top of this in terms of negatives Whirlwind is gear dependent. Unlike the Singer Barbarian or Spellcasters in general you need a good weapon and arguably some other particular specific armors such as Canopy Frozen. And then additionally, on top of this, Whirlwind is also slower than some other skills such as Frenzy, which has major movement speed, because most of your time is going to be spent getting to a particular area and also moving in between boss packs. So having high mobility is really great, and that's one of the reasons why Whirlwind is slightly negative compared to Frenzy, because it doesn't have that high mobility. Whirlwind is still a great build, and this is not me saying go Frenzy, this is just me saying that there are particular pros and cons in between each build, and honestly, if you're playing a Barbarian, just pick the build you like more, there isn't going to be such a substantial difference between them. So overall, with that being said, let's talk about where you should magic find. If you don't have the best gear, the best place, and honestly even with the best gear, the best place to magic find is the pit. The pit is in Act 1, and it's really easy to magic find. It's also one of the best places in the game because it can drop every item available, whether it's a Talrash's armor, an Immortal King's armor. For example, if you're thinking about farming Mephisto like every other sorceress likes to talk about, that's not going to drop your Immortal King's armor, for example. So if that's something you want, you actually want to focus more on the pit. On top of this, the pit is also very reliable to find, so when it comes to multiplayer, where maps are always reset every time you make a new game, you can just simply take the Outer Cloister Waypoint and follow the path outside, and this will eventually take you to the pit. So, the pit is very reliable to find, one of the best places for finding every item in the game, and is also pretty easy to farm quickly. So overall, the pit is by far your best area, especially when you don't have good gear. Additionally, if you're somehow in Act 5, whether this is multiplayer and people carried you, or you actually farmed enough gear so you were able to handle the rest of Hell Mode, Frigid Highlands is also a great place to magic find, because it's really close to the waypoint. All you have to do is move up a few feet, kill Eldritch, find item, and then go down to Shank the Overseer and do the same thing. So Frigid Highlands is similar to the pit, where it's really great loot, reliable because it's always there by the waypoint, and you don't have to like teleport around looking for it. Now, once you have gear, this is where you can add in two other areas I recommend. The next one is Travancol. This place is amazing for not only good gear, but high runes as well. And what's even more special about Travancol when it comes to the Barbarian is that Find Item is an amazing skill. Find Item allows you to use 
your chance on a corpse to drop items again. So basically when you kill a council member or whatever it is, and then you find item, it's like killing them a second time. The loot that they drop is very based off what the monster is because every monster has a specific loot table depending on what monster they are, monster type, the area. For example, ghosts in the Forgotten Tower and Arcane Sanctuary, they actually don't drop armor, which means they actually have a better chance at dropping runes, for example. But overall, basically, find item is amazing, and farming Travancol council members is really, really great for this reason. Next, we also have Chaos Sanctuary. One of the most popular methods when it comes to the Chaos Sanctuary is what I call seal rushing. You want to rush right to the first seal, open the seal, kill the guardian and then move on to the next seal and repeat this you want to basically spawn diablo as quick as possible by seal rushing you will be able to quickly kill three guaranteed boss packs find item and then kill diablo himself for some decent loot so overall these are the four main areas if your gear isn't that good i recommend strictly farming the pits only if you are on single player you can also farm andoriel and mephisto because you know exactly where they are every single game on multiplayer though you don't know where they are so you have to find them every single game and because of this it's really not worth farming so andoriel and mephisto i only recommend farming them if you have the high crushing blow and you know exactly where they are because single player maps do not change unless you change difficulty so now that we've covered how Whirlwind kind of works, where I recommend magic finding, let's talk about the gear here. So the gear is pretty simple actually. Uh, you want to farm most of this in Nightmare. For example, Nightmare Andoriel, Nightmare Mephisto, Diablo, Bale, Eldritch and Shank. Anywhere pretty much in Nightmare you can find most of these items. So let's talk about which items you want. Now, my personal favorite is running a rib cracker, which is upgraded using, I believe, Lum, Pull, and Perfect Emerald in the cube. This will increase the uh, damage of rib cracker from like 165 all the way to 467, as you can see here on the screen. Rib cracker is absolutely amazing. 50% crushing blow. Mace class, which also fits with your mace mastery. And overall, just amazing. I just love it. So rib cracker, you can farm this off nightmare bosses. I highly recommend it. Um, next, we have the armor here, Treachery, which is a Shale Thal Lem. Lem is kind of hard to find. It's not super rare like a high rune, but it's not really common either. The most reliable way is a Nightmare Hellforge. If you do your Hellforge in Nightmare, hopefully it drops a Lem for you. You can get this, which will give you Fade, which reduces your damage taken by 15% from physical damage, as well as 60 to all resistances. And the attack speed, well, that doesn't really matter to be honest, but it's mainly the resistances here. Honestly, because it's not as important for Whirlwind in regards to that attack speed, you can run something instead, such as, um, let's see here, uh, Smoke. Here it is, Smoke, 50 to all resistances, Neflum. This is actually better than a Treachery, arguably, if you don't have that Lem Rune. Honestly, if I had to choose, I'd probably go a uh, Smoke and then give my Mercenary the Treachery instead, because the Mercenary does benefit from the uh, increased attack speed. However, if you have two Lems, Treachery for both of you, hey, Nothing, nothing can go wrong there, but either way, treachery or smoke. Now, if you're super poor, you can go with a myth here. Hell, am, nef, two to barbarian skills, but no resistances at all. But this is a pretty good temporary armor as well. Now, when it comes to gloves, I highly recommend crafting gloves. I forget what the recipe is here. I always forget when it comes to crafting, but I will leave this on the screen somewhere here. And this is really great because it gives you life leech guaranteed and more importantly, crushing blow guaranteed. I rolled a perfect 10% crushing blow here. This will increase your damage substantially because crushing blow deals a percentage of a monster's health in damage. This includes bosses. I think it's like a quarter of the monster's health or a sixth, I can't remember, and then an eighth on bosses, I think. But when you're hitting them so many times with Whirlwind, uh, Crushing Blow can hit constantly, which really, really builds up. So simply put, Crushing Blow, amazing when it comes to hell mode. Next, we have a Talrash's helmet here, Life Leech, Mana Leech. When it comes to melee skills like Whirlwind, Berserk, Frenzy, etc., uh, you can actually steal life and mana to regenerate as you strike them. So having that life and mana leech is absolutely amazing, especially when Whirlwind costs a lot of mana. The extra life and resistances here are nice. I guess you could use something like a lore as well if you're really poor and you didn't find a Talrash's helmet. Uh, for Amulet, we just have a random one to all skills with resistances here, and we have attack rating here with resistances and then raven frost is a really big one for the cannot be frozen this will allow you to not have slower movement speed slower attack speed and is overall just really great the only downside here with the cold damage is that if you have any cold damage 
it might shatter the monster to pieces and then you cannot find item on them so you might have to not have raven frost because of the cold damage but when it comes to not having a lot of good gear if you are lucky enough to find this you just have to accept that hey you won't find item on some monsters sometimes right because it's more important to be able to farm efficiently and handle hell mode than it is to go back into nightmare so raven frost i still choose to use until i find something else with cannot be frozen Finally, we also have String of Ears here, damage reduction, life steal, absolutely amazing. Uh, Standards, which is attack rating, strength, and dexterity. On the weapon swap here, we have a double spirit, so two to all skills. This is really important because when you go to buff yourself with battle orders, shout, etc., having four to all skills really adds up into their skill level. Additionally, when you go to find items, so you kill something and then you go to find item, switch to your double spirit because as you can see here without spirit my chance is 19 percent chance but when i switch to spirit and then find item it goes up to 35 percent so it's a really big increase now one thing i want to mention as well is that shops like mala can shop uh what is it javelins and spears with two or three to war cries so if you are lucky and you keep checking in hell mode you will eventually get three to war cries three to war cries which is six to war cries total on your uh, dual wielding spears so you can get six to everything here but i'm too lazy and this character is pretty fresh as soon as i beat bale i stopped playing him if i had it i would but here you can see i temporarily made two spirit swords in nightmare for four to all skills instead for charms we have a bunch of attack rating and max damage mercenary here we have an obedience now this is something i want to mention about whirlwind barb as well if you choose not to go mace mastery with a rib cracker another thing you can do here is go polar mastery instead so instead of mace mastery go polar mastery and then you can pick up an obedience and a partisan which you can find in nightmare and this will hold you over all the way up until hell mode you can actually beat hell mode with a partisan obedience i tried it out just for testing purposes if you can't beat hell mode with it you can definitely farm pits with it and eventually in hell mode including the pits you can find a great pole axe and if you're lucky enough to get five sockets you can make an obedience in that and you can see here it goes from 352 to 596 so having an obedience pole axe or great pole axe here is an amazing weapon as well and this you can definitely beat hell mode with either with an upgraded rib cracker or an obedience great pole axe but i'm a mace mastery fan i also like monks in my games so naturally i'm going to lean towards uh staves here treachery and talrash's helmet for the mercenary as well because of that uh attack speed life leech damage reduction um what else is there i think there's something in stash oh crafted belt so this is a caster belt now i messed up with the frenzy guide and showed a caster belt but you actually could possibly if you don't have like a string of ears or something you can craft an open wounds belt and open wounds is kind of similar to crushing blow where it deals a percentage of their health or i think it does a small percentage of damage i think over a period of time it's been a long time since i looked up open wounds so i've kind of forgotten it but open wounds isn't too bad the main thing from it is it prevents demons and monsters from healing so if you're facing something like uber diablo uh open wounds is really good for that one other thing since we're on these different stats deadly strike do we have something with deadly strike here because i really want to talk about it um i think it's on the first page uh here we go deadly strike so deadly strike is a chance to deal double damage this is similar to your mastery here where you have a chance to critical strike now the deadly strike and critical strike do not stack however if it for example mace mastery tries to crit and it doesn't it will then try your deadly strike and then it might this is what i heard i don't know if this is actually true i don't play a lot of barb but this is what i read a while ago when i was looking it up so if you have deadly strike it will not stack so if you have say 50 percent deadly strike and 29 percent uh mace mastery that is not a 79 percent chance to critical strike you have a 29 percent chance here and then a separate amount for the deadly strike so i believe that's how it works i could be wrong on that hopefully someone corrects me if i'm wrong on that it's been a long time since i looked up deadly strike and open wounds i just know open wounds prevents healing which is really important so overall that's basically the uh build setup for the whirlwind barbarian um once again polar mastery if you choose or mace mastery as well the other benefit to mace mastery is uh if you find like a bone snap and nightmare this will transition you into a rib cracker which you can then transition into a full immortal kings as you can see here one other thing i want to mention here as well is that you can find your immortal king's armor in the pits so if you're farming like nightmare Mef or not nightmare hell mephisto immortal king's armor will not drop this is the kind of armor that only drops in certain areas in the game and the pit is one of them so one of the other benefits to farming the pit is getting that immortal king's armor if the full immortal king barbarian is your kind of thing i know it's a very popular set 
Uh, my neighbor, back when I was like a teenager, I used to go swimming uh, with a friend and their dad used to play Diablo 2. And he had like a level 94 Barbarian running full Immortal Kings. So whenever I think about this set, it thinks about or it makes me think about uh, that one particular friend. Kind of like a long lost uncle, if you will. Um, and then, of course, if you're magic finding in the pits and whatnot, you can eventually find items like Ariad's Face, uh, Vampire Gaze, Go Rider. Uh, High Lords here. I found two High Lords off Hell and Dariel recently on my Sorceress. So if you're looking for a good amulet, Hell and Dariel's good. Uh, Raven Frost, of course, and Dwarf Star. So you can find a lot of items. You can find pretty much everything in the pits if you're looking for an easy place to farm. As I mentioned, you can also add an Eldritch Shank if you're in Act 5. If you have the gear to be able to handle Travancol and Chaos, those are great places as well. Um, so overall, last thing to cover, skills. Max out Whirlwind, very obvious there. So max out Whirlwind, you want 1.2 Berserk. This will allow you to kill physical immune monsters. Between physical damage and then magic damage, you should be able to kill everything in the entire game. Max out the mastery of your choice. If you're going uh, pull arms, like I mentioned with the obediences, go pull arm mastery. If you're like axes or whatever because you like them, go ahead. In my case here, I'm going maces, maybe full immortal kings one day, which means mace mastery. So I've chosen that. But either one, you want to max one out. If you're kind of, uh, I'm going to choose whatever I want. Maybe put one point into everything. But personally, I like to focus on one specific one. Uh, one into natural resistance and increase speed. Over here, this is where it gets even more important. You want your Howl skill level combined with your level to equal 88. The way Howl works is it takes those two together, and if it's higher than the monster level, it will scare them. So basically, the strategy, as I kind of showed earlier, is you want to skip most monsters and then kill the boss packs themselves. So by scaring most of the things, for example, in the pit, most monsters are level 85, and then the boss's minions are like 87. So you need a level 88 howl, if I remember correctly. So 76 plus 12 equals 88. We are on Sesame Street here for a few seconds. Now I can fear everything, including Chaos Sanctuary, all that different stuff. Howl is your big game changer when it comes to magic finding hell mode, especially with very bad gear. After you've gotten a total of 88, one point into battle cry, battle command, and find item. Once you've got everything here as we've seen set up, you should be able to put all of your points now into battle orders. Of If that's what you want to do, I was going to say of your choice. If you want to go max battle orders, you can. Extra points in the find item if you want. Honestly, like there's multiple places you can go. I like to go battle orders though because extra life is nice, especially if you have to put a lot of points into strength and dexterity in order to wear something like an obedience here. So overall, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this guide. If there's any questions you have, leave a comment down below. Hopefully I or an expert can help you out. If you are not leveling a barbarian yet and you're thinking about it, check out my leveling guide. It's going to be at the end of the video here. I have all the class leveling guides there. It's going to make your normal nightmare and hell mode super easy. And then once you're in hell mode, you've beaten the game like I have here. Hell Act 5. Oh, look at that. Done, right? Once you're done here, it's time to make some better gear, find better gear. And this is this video to do that. So overall, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you on my next one. See you guys.